Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're now tuned in to Figs Pro Tips, and of course, I'm your host, Coach Fig, and today I'm back with another one, this time giving you guys my take on the upcoming pay-per-view fight featuring Saul Canelo Alvarez versus um, Edgar the Monster or the Prodigy Berlanga. Uh, it's a loaded undercard. I'm looking forward to some of those uh, fights on that undercard and uh, just going to give you guys my my thoughts on who I think wins, how and why. Um, so let's get right to it. Off, off rip, off rip. I do not want to hear this is Mexico versus Puerto Rico. No, Edgar Berlanga is not the representation of Puerto Rico. He is not. He hasn't done anything. In fact, I don't even believe that he's done anything to be in this position other than sell himself accordingly with his choice of words. Um, he talked himself into this fight. Um, you know, you hear people say, fake it till you make it. Um, yeah, kind of kind of that same scenario. Reason I say that is, um, let's just go to his box rec, right? This man, um, his resume will, will look impressive, 22 and, uh, and 0 with 17 KOs. That looks impressive. It's all good, right? But what has he done in his last couple fights? Um, it, it hasn't really been impressive, right? Let's think of like what's the biggest name on his resume right now. Maybe Jason Quigley in a fight where he did drop Quigley four times, but he couldn't seal the deal. Um, it just goes to show that as the competition gets a little harder, it, it becomes harder to walk through these guys. If we go further down and we really investigate his uh, resume, he did what most people do when they're trying to build a, a record, right? You want to build a name. His first three fights came from where? Mexico, right? Mexico. Um, for those of you that are really in tune with the fight game, y'all understand that Mexico, uh, um, Colombia, uh, a lot of these uh, South American uh, countries, it's a, it's a almost guaranteed place to go to build your, your, your record. Not your resume, but your record. Uh, just kind of build... Um, that confidence in the fighter, get him going, get him used to fighting without the headgear, the smaller glove. All of those things become factors as they continue to grow and climb the ladder to success in the fight game. However, Berlanga was able to get away with this same type of uh, fighter building all the way until he couldn't stop guys anymore. Because if I'm not mistaken, he hasn't had a knockout win. And let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Mr. Decision. Uh, I guess his last fight. His last fight came with a. Uh, it says he that his last fight was with a, with a KO. And, and my apologies. I do not follow him um, because they made a lot of noise about about him coming out of New York. Like he was the biggest thing out of New York. And I'm sorry, there's so much more talent you can find in New York that would represent the city or the state so much better. Anyway. Um, and I don't want to like a hater because you know, I'm not hating. I'm just giving you guys facts, right? My my facts. Uh, you cannot compare this man's resume to Canelo Alvarez's resume. I can I can tell you five, ten, fifteen guys off the top of my head that are more deserving of a shot at Canelo before we even look at this guy. Here's the problem: you got people like Benavides who have. Uh, made it a, a, a point to where everyone calls him the, the, the monster of the division, the boogeyman, whatever y'all want to say he is, right? Cool. And, and Benavides is, he's raw, he's the, he is the real deal, and uh, his future is bright. He's young, he's a, a very physical, very dominant kind of fighter, puts a lot of pressure, throws a lot of punches. Fantastic. However, if Benavides really believes in himself and he really feels that he's that person, um, to dethrone Canelo, he would be okay with taking the smaller amount because that's going to propel you to another level and it's going to allow you to make uh, bigger paydays, right? However, by not accepting the fight terms, I mean, we're still talking millions of dollars here. It's not like he's getting like a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars. He's still going to make more money fighting Canelo than he will anyone else. In, in fact, more money than he's made his entire career. Right. Um, so those are the politics of the game. So this is why you, you won't see a Canelo Benavides happening. If it does, it'll be down the line. Um, the Caleb Plant, I, I believe he, he, if anything, he's deserving of that rematch. 
right? He's proven himself. He's up there, right? Why not give him that chance? Um, even uh, Demetrius Andre, even though, you know, he fell short against Benavidez, it doesn't mean that he should be knocked out of contention to go up against someone like uh, uh, Canelo. Uh, again, ahead of uh, Berlanga. But Berlanga's done a good job at, you know, calling out the name and he's been consistent. And so the casual fan can only look at his record and say, oh, this guy's undefeated, 22-0, 17 knockouts. Oh, wow. And when you look at his highlights, he's been knocking out a bunch of tomato cans, right? So it's easy to get people excited when they see someone get knocked out, you know, on, on different occasions. Um, however, when we're going to break down Berlanga, um, fight style, flat-footed, defense is suspect, right? He doesn't he doesn't bring the hands, but he's not disciplined. Um, and he relies on, you know, what they call him to be the power, right? He has power, they say, right? So that's what he relies on to come out uh, victorious. That's not going to work against someone like Canelo. Canelo is uh, too savvy on, on the defensive end. He sets traps. He goes to the body well, applies pressure. I mean, he's been in there with literally everyone you can think of, right? Um, I don't see any possible scenario uh, where, where Berlanga can win this fight other than Canelo stands still, puts his hands behind his back, and lets Berlanga just tee off on him. Um, Berlanga's going to be in for uh, um, a learning lesson. Like they say, be humble or be humbled. And I believe Saturday um, he will be humbled. I believe on the 14th. Of September, Canelo's going to show up, and he's going to do what he's going to do. So this is what I'm saying. Let's not call this Puerto Rico versus Mexico. Let's not do that. This is not the representation. I don't think we should ever do that with any one individual. We, should, we shouldn't make it about race or culture. No, we shouldn't do that. This is going to be the best fighter in the game right now, uh, putting someone in their place. You know what I'm saying? Um giving him an opportunity to rise to the occasion. And, hey, prove, prove doubters like me wrong, right? Um, like I said, I don't see how this this young man can pull this off. Um, Canelo is a 62, I believe, 62, 63 fight veteran. I mean, he's got – Canelo has forgotten more things about boxing than Berlanga knows about boxing. Um I don't see I don't see a way for Berlanga for Berlanga to actually pull pull off this victory. Um, however, I will tune in um, because um, I, I would like I would like to see um, where where it goes between um, uh, Canelo. I would like to see what he does after. What's what's next for Canelo? I'm not really interested in the Berlanga uh, aspect of it. Um, I don't. I'm not a big fan of people that talk shit. Okay, I'm not here for the talking shit aspect of it. This is boxing. All right. You show up, you lace them gloves up, you get in that ring, and you let your hands in the talking. But all this shit in the press conference, talking shit, trying to act tough, hold me back, man, cut it out, man. Cut it out. That that ain't got nothing to do with the fight game. So, sure, the young kids, they go crazy with the rival clips on Instagram and on YouTube and TikTok and all that, and that's cool. If that's what's going to sell the tickets, I get it. At the end of the day, it is a business, and they do need to make their money. Um, So that that's going to be my pick. I'm going with Canelo. I'm going with a stoppage. Canelo's going to knock this kid out. He's going to stop this kid. He's going to, like I said, he's going to humble this kid, and um, he'll be on to the next. Let's let's break down the undercard, though, right? We have Danny Garcia versus Eris Landy Lara. And for the casual boxing fan, you're probably familiar with Danny Garcia because he's he was around a bit more recently and uh, a bit more trendy with uh, uh uh, clothing line and, and, and jewelry, and he, I know he has a big social media presence and stuff like that. So uh, the younger crowd is probably going to be more familiar with Danny Garcia, and you guys are going to be quick to say Danny's going to beat Lara because you're not going to know who Lara is. I will tell you that Lara is the first person that potentially beat Canelo Alvarez from a stylistic uh, standpoint. You guys can go back, look that fight up, Canelo Alvarez versus uh, Everest Landy, uh, Lara. Uh, I felt I personally felt Lara did win on points. He outboxed him. He's um he's Cuban, so he has that great pedigree, that great foundation of uh, um, footwork, defense, make you miss, make you pay mentality. Um, and so 
when it comes to Garcia fighting Lara, I actually I like Danny Garcia, but I think Lara's gonna be too much for Danny Garcia based on styles. Lara moves a lot, gives angles, uh, he uses both hands, um, and he's he's a, he's a southpaw, so that that adds another element, right? So that's gonna allow uh, Lara to utilize the angles a little bit better against Danny Garcia. I think that that neutralizes Danny's best punch, which is that left hook, uh, being that. Uh, Lara is going to be sitting right on top of it. So that's going to neutralize that left hook. Um, however, if Danny can catch him with the left hook, it, it may be a different result. We're all talking about uh, older Lara. He's not as young anymore. So those legs may not be able to move as well as they did when he fought Canelo, you know, uh, the first time around. So, uh, but I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick Lara to, to win against Danny Garcia. And I'm going to pick for him to win decisively. I think, um, from a point standpoint, I think Lara's going to run the points up on him. It's going to be hard for Danny to close the gap um, uh, as he tends to fade in the later rounds as well. He, 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 he's always dealt with, like, fatigue issues and, you know, not a knock against him. It just it happens to, to, you know, a lot of the greats. But I, I think Lara's ability to pour it on um, and, 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 and move and, and not sit in one spot to allow Danny Garcia to pick his shots, I think that's what's going to be the deciding factor in that. And um, that is a world title fight. So the WBA, Lara's WBA world middleweight title. So tune in for that one. Make sure you guys are paying uh, close attention. And then we got uh, Caleb Plant uh, versus Trevor McCumbie. I'll be honest. I don't know who the hell McCumbie is, but it's for the WBA interim super middleweight title. That means nothing to me. Interim, that's like... It means nothing to me. It's the same thing like WBC giving out the medal, uh, putting a ribbon around someone's neck after uh, after a fight. That means absolutely nothing to me. Um, that's one of the things that is wrong with boxing is that they got they got so many belts to, to go around. It doesn't. Everyone's a champion in someone's eye based on a strap or organization or whatever whatever it is. Um, but I'm gonna pick Caleb Plant for the, the simple fact that I don't know who Trevor McCombie is and. Um, Caleb Plant is a very, very great boxer. He has great movement. He has good size. He's proven that he can crack. Um, he's uh, defensively signed. He's very technical. He's disciplined. He keeps his hands up. And uh, he uses the whole ring. And, um, you know, aside from, you know, his fight uh, with Canelo, I mean, I, I, to me personally, man, he's he's got he's got the goods, man. You know, he's got the goods. So um, I'm, I'm going to go with Caleb Plant. To be the um, Trevor McCombie. And McCombie, my apologies if you are the next uh, big thing and I'm not aware of who you are, what you do, but it's the first time your name comes across my screen. I promise. Then we have uh, Rolando Romero, aka Roly uh, Romero, versus uh, uh, Manuel Jaimez for the uh, super lightweight. Or I guess it's not for a title, it's just in the super lightweight division. Um, same scenario. I don't know who Manuel Jaimez is. We all know who Roley is. Roley is the smaller version of Edgar Ber uh, Berlanga. He talks a good game, or should I say he talks a lot of shit. He talks the right shit, and he puts himself in position for the right opportunities. And um, as we've seen um, in previous um, previous outings, it doesn't always work in his favor. It doesn't always work out for him. And so um, I am going to pick him just because uh, I don't know who the other guy is, and Roley does have uh, – does have good power. He does apply good pressure, and he does have the ability to box. But if only if he can keep it together for the uh, duration of the fight, uh, will he be victorious? I don't know who he's fighting, so I, you know I, I got to go with what I know. Well, should I say who I know? And then it says the prelims are like MMA fights. If you guys know me, I'm not really big on MMA, so I won't comment. But I will tell you who they have fighting in the prelims, which start at 6 p.m., which is a uh, Stephen Fulton versus Carlos Castro, Roman Villa. Versus Ricardo Salas, Jonathan Lopez versus Ricky Medina, Lawrence King versus Vaughn Williams, Yo Nelly Hernandez versus uh, Jose Charles, uh, Beck, uh, don't know that last name, Ner Nerman, Nerman Bet versus Joshua Connolly. That is the prelims for the Canelo Alvarez Edgar Belanger pay per view card. If you guys are into MMA, then you're in for a treat because you get. A little bit of both. You get the prelims with MMA, and then you get the you know the the, the big uh, the big show at the end of the card with um, Canelo leading the way as the main event. Lara versus Garcia, Plant versus McCumbie, and uh, Romero versus Jaimes. That's my take on the Canelo 
versus Berlanga. Comment below. Let me know if you agree. If you disagree, we could talk about it or not. Either way, I'll be tuned in. I'll be watching. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. I'm Coach Fig. Thank you for your time. And I'm out of here.